Hi, I'm Peter Charles of Hooked for Life Fly Fishing, and welcome to my video on spay casting with single hand lines. Now, a lot of you are aware that uh, specific lines like this Airflow a Scout line have been developed to help us spay cast with single handed rods. And those are well known and well documented, and there's some excellent uh, videos up by Airflow on how to cast these. So, I'm not going to get into this aspect of spay casting with single handed rods. Rather, I'm going to talk about casting with regular single hand lines. Uh, before we get into that, though, I want to talk about spay casting in general, particularly how we load the rod. If you're familiar with spay casting at all, you know instead of having the line flowing straight back off the rod tip the way we normally do in, in single hand casting, overhead casting, uh, we have what's called a D loop where the anchor is in the water and the end of the line is uh, up by the rod tip. Now, when we uh, make a D loop uh, for a spay cast, unlike uh, an overhead cast, only some of the line is helping to load the rod. The thing to keep in mind with uh, rod loading is if the line is not moving or not moving very much as we begin the forward motion of the rod, it's not doing anything to load the rod. And uh, when we're overhead casting and we've got all that line behind us, when we start to move the rod forward, we're loading the rod using all of that line because it's all being moved when we move the rod forward. But with a D-loop, that's not the case. Some of that line, the line that's in the bottom of the D-loop, is not productive weight. It's not part of the, the casting weight of the, uh, of the rod loading. So as we move the rod forward with a, a D-loop, it's the top part of the D-loop that's doing the work for us, not the bottom part of the D-loop. That's a critical component of understanding the rod loading with the spay casting that it's only the top portion of the D-loop that's really supplying the mass for the rod loading. Of course, as the rod goes forward, more and more line transitions into the top of the D-loop and more becomes available. But when we start, most, you know, a good chunk of that line is sitting at the bottom of the D-loop and it's not moving. The anchor is stuck, it's not moving at all, so it's doing nothing for us for the rod loading. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. So when Line designers design spay lines. They're designing it to place the maximum amount of mass in the top of the D-loop and the minimum amount of mass in the bottom of the D-loop. That explains why conventional spay lines have such a long front taper. So if you looked at, let's say, the Airflow Delta Spay, for example, you would see that it has something like a 30-foot front taper. You know, and when you think of that for a moment, an overhead line has like a, a six foot front taper or an eight foot front taper, and a spay line has a 30 foot front taper. If you get into long belly lines, you can have front tapers that are close to 50 foot long. So when you're thinking of that, that the reason for it is simply that, is to place the minimum amount of weight in the bottom of the D-loop and put the maximum amount of weight in the top of the D-loop. So when we're gonna spay cast a single hand line, there are some lines that will do that job better than others. And I'm going to show you some lines here that are going to do the job quite well, and some lines that are not designed at all for spay casting, yet you could still make them work. I'd like to start off with the good old double taper. Believe it or not, they're actually rather good spay casting lines for single handed rods. In the early days, uh, virtually all of the um, spay lines out there were really what we call salmon double tapers which were just double taper lines with long front tapers on the end of about 15 foot. And I fished them and they worked just fine. So if you've got a double taper, you've got a line that's not too bad for uh, single hand spay casting. Putting that aside, let's look at some of the others. There are a number of lines put out by Airflow that have very long front tapers. And uh, they have relatively short heavy bellies and relatively short to medium length rear tapers. And I've got them stacked here. We're going to go through them. The 40 plus is probably the, the most ideal line for a single hand spay casting. It's a very overweight line. It's meant for distance casting. So the whole idea behind the 40 plus is a 120 foot line where the name comes from. And you can cast a very long way overhead with it. Now, in order for it to roll out uh, smoothly, it has to have a long front taper. If you've 
seen my video uh, recently on fly line tapers, you'll know that having a long front taper is good for distance casting. So that's why this line was built that way. But guess what? It's a fantastic spay line for single hand casting. And it comes in a variety of densities. So uh, the front taper on this is quite long and it looks just like the taper for a spay line for a two-handed rod. So think about that. If you look at this line, bingo, it looks like a spay line that you put on a two-hander. So it's no surprise it works on single-handers as well. Now, we have a line that we don't see much, uh, get much press. It's called the Beach Line. It's built much like this 40 Plus, only it's a, a little bit lighter, smaller package. We have a, a lake line and a river line that are basically done with the Airflow Delta Taper, very similar to the 40 Plus. They're lighter, relatively speaking, to the 40 Plus. Uh, they're also available in, in smaller line weights. Uh, you'll notice that the 6 cents is rated as a 4.5 here. If you had a 4 weight rod, you put a 4.5 on it. If you had a 5 weight rod, you put a 5.6 on it. Um, but uh, as I say, these are more finesse than the 40 plus, uh, less oriented towards distance than the 40 plus. So it's a bit more of a finesse solution, but again, the same thing, very long front tapers. All right, I'm gonna talk about the Exceed. Now the Exceed is a standard trout line. It's a standard trout taper, seven, seven foot front end. It's very typical to the type of lines you probably have on your single hand rods right now. So you're going to go out with that. You're going to say to yourself, well, I don't want to buy one of these. I've already got a trout line. Yeah. Well, let's talk about this one. Seven foot front taper. Will it spay cast? You betcha. Uh, you can take a look at this little bit of video I've got going here of me doing a double spay with a eight foot, five weight uh, Luma Shore Soccer bass rod. And I'm getting about 50, 55 feet out of it. And some cast was getting over 60 feet. So, and... I had a five weight exceed on that rod. So it's a five weight rod, five weight line, and I could spay cast with it. So even if you don't have a specialty line like that, one of these, and you don't want to run out and buy one, you can spay cast with a conventional trout line. And, uh, and you don't have to go up a line weight. All you need is an efficient D-loop. If your D-loop is decent size and in decent shape and you've got a decent anchor, you're going to get a spay cast out of it. Now, are you going to get a really long spay cast out of it? No, but you you can easily get 50 some odd feet out of one of these without too much trouble. I mean, if I can get 50, 55 feet, 60 feet out of a, an eight foot five weight, I think a typical nine foot five weight should do better. Uh, so you should be able to get reasonable distance even with a standard uh, trout line. So I, I keep that in mind. It's about the efficiency of the D loop more than anything else. Yes, a standard line is not as efficient as one of these that has that long front taper, but it can be done. Uh, it's just a little less efficient. So if you are out fishing with a standard trout line on your reel and you go around the bend and all of a sudden you're, you've got this wonderful pool in front of you, because, but you've got that whack of hard trees behind you. Now, I know we could do a steeple cast. Yeah, I know about those. But the thing is, don't be put off by it. You can do a double spay, a single spay, whatever you want, roll, spay, snake roll. It'll work. You can do it. These lines will do it for you. So keep that in mind. You can go out and get lines with long front tapers and short, thick bellies that do an efficient job with spay casting, but you can single hand spay a standard trout line. So keep that in mind and keep in mind that efficient D-loop if you've got a decent D-loop and a decent anchor, you can pretty well spay cast anything. Cheers.